Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Tween Taramina's on Ordinary Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Ordinary Television. A lot to talk about this week here, obviously. A um, couple teams we got to address, obviously. Um, we're going to talk a lot. I mean, like, a lot of basketball this week here, obviously. Um, we got, I mean, like, um, I know there's been a lot of rumblings going on in the football world, especially at Stony Creek. Um, can't verify or can't confirm anything as of yet um, what is going on over there. But it looks like there is a coaching place over there at Stony Creek. But I won't, but I cannot independently verify the situation over there as of yet. So we'll keep an eye on that situation over there at Stony Creek. Um, so let's go to our story, main story here. Of course, we're going to recap, obviously, the week that's been of the basketball world. Um, you know, obviously, people are going to look at the records and say, like, uh, a couple of these teams, I know a lot of people are excited about the Lions, and I know that they are really excited about them, and they're in the NFC Championship game. So... You know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens there. But let's go to some basketball stuff here, obviously. Um, when you look at the things in the girls' basketball world, um, people look at, of course, the top 23 um, in the rankings this week. And I think the rankings make a lot of sense this week. I really do. Considering where um, each team's been. Um, I think when you look at... I think when you look at the... Um, you know, when you look at the races um, in the red and the white and the blue and the gold, um, the gold, you know, you kind of pretty much shed, you pretty much shed the best. I mean, Ferndale really is the team that, you know, they're the ones that have the edge right now. They're the ones that are in control of that division right now. I mean, you know, and then, of course, you know, you look at them and they're looking for a game um, coming up. And I think that's going to be really interesting to see um, if Ferndale – I mean, like if Ferndale, you know what I mean, can get a game in there, you know what I mean? Because I, I saw, I saw the Twitter feed that they were looking for a game and all that. So it's really interesting to see how, um, you know, how that, um, you know. But when you look at Ferndale right now, you look at that division; they really don't, you know what I mean? They they don't really look like they're not going to be tested until they get in the postseason. So if you're Coach Keith Paris. You got to say, wait a minute here. We got to get something here. I mean, because I don't think our league's going to get us better. Um, so we're going to have to play somebody legitimately tough. And, you know, so that's why they, I don't know if they found a game or not. Um, I know they were in contact with Arbor Prep, which if they played, that would be a really interesting matchup. Um, considering, you know, you look at Ypsilanti and Arbor Prep, they got the Atomi Twins um, still there. I think they're still there. Um but it would be interesting because, you know, Ferndale's got the three. Um, they got two very good freshman talents. Um, they got a, I mean, like in there, in there and we'll see what happens. Um, Avondale pretty much injury riddled right now, um, but they played much better. Um, so when I look at Avondale, they're, in, they're kind of in that same boat as Ferndale. But... I think they're going to be okay. Um, I just think, honestly, when you look at, and then you look at, of course, Oak Park, Pontiac, and Ferndale U, I'm kind of wondering where Pontiac's been. I'm kind of wondering where they've been because they're struggling again. And that's, it's it's a challenge. I mean, like, I'm trying to figure out where Pontiac's been because they were doing well early. I mean, they were winning some tough games. Now, you look at last year, compared to last year's record and this year's record for Pontiac, this year's been much better for them. And I think getting that experience that they're having a really young team is kind of helped them. It really has. Um, so when I look at Pontiac's situation, um, just kind of really been, you know, up and down really has been. Um, Oak Park, we know they're a young team still. Um, I think they're starting to get back into some bad habits again. 
which is not good. They got to get that thing figured out quick there. Because if not, it's going to be a long year for them. I mean, honestly, when you look at the Eagles, and honestly, when you look at the Knights, I mean, like, this is a, you know, they're trying to build a program there, trying to build a foundation there. I mean, they got some young pieces there. They got some young talent there. But there is some question there. There's got to be, there's some questions with that program. There's some questions. Ferndale University, um, we'll see. I think with them, they're struggling a lot. I mean, they're struggling a little bit. Um, you know, and I, I know Coach Banderol has got a challenge ahead of him. So, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, but it's clear as day, though, Ferndale University, they got to struggle. They're struggling right now a little bit. So, that's my goal recap a little bit. Is I still think Ferndale's the best team. Um, Avondale, and then you look at, um, Pontiac, Oak Park, Ferndale University. Now, one thing I'm curious to see, and I think before I go back into the basketball recaps, I'm curious to see how Mother Nature reacts, because considering, you know, we're filming this week on a Monday, I know there's a freezing rain in the forecast, um, you know, for especially Monday night and a Tuesday morning, um, I still think we're going to play because I'm not being mean here. It's just, you know, you're running out of time when it comes to scheduling games. And I know it's a big challenge, a big hassle on athletic directors. Um, I think it's more particularly on the boys' side of things. So my beef a little bit with this is if you're in a three-team division, it's more harder to make up games. It's also harder for gym space. It's also harder to get officials, you know, when you make up games. So is it worth it to go three divisions or is it worth it to go four? And I think going four in this type of situation makes a lot of sense because, you know, it'll be much easier to make up games. Um, you know, considering right now we have in the boys situation, we have three games. You know, we have three divisions. And, you know, and I think, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how, um, especially in wake of we've had two recent snowstorms, you know, with teams making up games. Um, I think it'll make sense to play Tuesday night because I'm being honest with you. Um, it, the roads are going to be just are going to clear up after, I think, mid-afternoon. And I know the weather service in White Lake, they issued a winter weather advisory. Um, from 7 to 9 until 4 p.m. Tuesday. And, you know, so now you kind of like, it puts athletic directors in a tough spot because if a superintendent calls off school and some districts have a no school, no game policy. And to me, I don't think that's right because, you know, and I'm being honest here. Um, I think honestly, and I, and I know I've said this before in the podcast years ago, is, you know, I've always believed that, you know, that, um, you know, I don't think having a no school, no game policy is a good idea because one, it's, it's, there's a mental, there's a mental aspect of it. And then there is a, um, you know, and then what happens if the roads, you know, clear up, you know what I mean? Then, you know, everything, everything's fine and all that. But if like, you know, but if, um, but I get it. It's it's the athletic director's call. It's the superintendent's call. I just think it's more of a hassle if you have to cancel a game on that night. You know, if it's especially like if it's a if it's a weather situation. Um, I know safety's involved in this, um, but you know when you're you know when you're you're in, you're kind of in a really rough spot. Let's say if you're in a three division, um, considering you got to make up games, especially league games. Um, those are games you really got to make up. I mean, like if you're in a non-conference game, those are days. I don't think if, if if you're a non-conference, I don't think you have to make that up. But if you are in league, you have to make it up. So, you know, so it's just a challenge that faces superintendents, athletic directors, and school districts. But I am not a big fan of the no school, no game policy. Um, because you know it it creates a hassle on people. So that's really my beef of the day is 
you know, especially because I know we got and we got, you know, weather, you know, weather in Michigan's always tough as it is, but that's just my take on it. So we'll see what happens there. All right now, let's go back to the to the um to the, to the um to basketball stuff here. Obviously, I just had to I just had to make my rant there this week a little bit about the no school no game policy. Um, that some school districts use. Not a big fan of it, but I get safety's important. I know it is, but you know, especially when you look at here, if you know, looking at wake of tomorrow, wake of the storm coming up here. Um, you just gotta be weather. You just gotta look at, of course, what the situation is. You know, and it's a tough call for everybody. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's go to the let's go back to basketball. Um. I already talked the gold. Let's talk the blue. Um, Farmington, when I look at this team, you know, um, just hard to explain. I mean, they're struggling. I mean, it is clear they are struggling. And, you know, I'm looking at the stats. I'm looking at everything here. It's clear when you look at the stats. It's clear to me that they're the um they're gonna be on the bottom of the blue this year. They're gonna be the last place team. I mean, unless they do something. But other than that, I don't see. It. Because you look at how um you look at um Farmington and their girls. Yes, they they're a young team. They're trying to adjust to a new system. It's difficult to do that. So I'm kind of surprised, you know what I mean? Like, you know, their only win of the year was against Ferndale University. And I think when you look at Farmington right now, just the way that they've been, um, they're struggling. That It's clear as day that they're struggling. They've got to get that fixed because if not, they're in trouble. I mean, they're really much in some serious trouble. So that's my take on it. You know what I mean? So when I look at Farmington, um, the team, right? I mean, like, and then I look at a team like, um, like Rochester Adams. Adams, they're a young team. They've been competitive in some games. I mean, they've been very competitive. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think with them, it just comes down to is they've been very competitive. Um, they've had some tough luck as of late. I know Coach Joe Malberg very well. Um, in the game against Troy, they did, they, it was a tough way for them to lose that one. I mean, on their home floor against a good, against, against a team I think is getting better. I think Troy's a team that's getting better. Um, but you know, for Adams, I mean, like they just got to stay the course, you know, and you know, they just got to stay the course. That's just my take on them is you stay the course, you're going to be fine. I mean, that's my take on Adams is you stay the course, you're fine. Um, I think, and then there's a team I've really been playing well right now. It's been Troy Athens. I think Troy Athens, the way that they're playing, I mean, they've been competitive, very competitive. They have that, um, you know, I really like how Coach J.C. Clump's got that team, like, um, believing and competing. And... I think for I think Athens is a surprise dark horse. People would say, "Well, why do you say that with Troy Athens?" Because they got some players on that team. I mean, Alex Link's a solid player. Abby Malone's a solid player. Um, they've gotten contributions elsewhere. Elsewhere, um, you really gotta like what Coach J.C. Clump's done over there. So when I look at Athens and you know look at their schedule ahead. It looks manageable. It looks very manageable. So when I look at the Red Hawks, that schedule, I think they could they could do some damage. They could do some damage. Um, I'll be very curious to see how they do against Troy. Be curious to see how they do against Berkeley. I'll be extremely curious to see how they do against Safford A and T. And with A and T, you know. A and T to me looks like they're they're the real deal offensively. I mean, they know how to win games. 
I mean, like, but the two game, but I'm really concerned about that team defensively. I've been, and I've been saying this for about two months now, is Coach Akita Coltrane's team, this is a team that really, you know, offensively, they got the people. They got the players. They're going to score in bunches. It's just the other side of the ball is where they've got some issues. Defensively, how is this team going to be in the postseason? How is this team going to be in the post? I mean, like, you know, when you look at that district they're in, at Berkeley with Berkeley, the in Detroit Renaissance in there, um, and then you have Detroit Mumpers in there. I mean, how is this team going to look defensively? Because as much as for the offensive <laughs> prowess this team has, I still don't trust this team defensively. Because this team defensively is going to give up a bunch of points. They're going to seriously give up a ton of points. I mean, they play a frantic pace where, a high-octane pace where they want to outscore you. Okay, that's fine. but. If you, but if you give up points, if you score points at that frantic pace on one end, you're going to give up points in a frantic pace on the other end. And that is a concern if you're Coach Akita Coltrane. Because honestly, defensively, this is where postseason games are won, is on the defensive end, not on the offensive end. Defense wins championships. Now, I'm going to talk about another team that's got some defensive issues. In a little bit. But I'm looking at with a and that's how you're going to win games is on the defensive side of the floor. So we'll see with them going forward. Then there's Berkeley. Berkeley, to me, is a complete team. I really like how they've been doing. I like playing Haley Kirkwood, um, Avery Winter Garden, Mavie Nolan, um, Nadia Watt. Um, I'll tell you what, Coach Clay Shaver's done a great job with that team. And Berkeley's been battle-tested, and they're getting better. I really like what this team's been doing. And you look at the top 23, it kind of explains where I have Berkeley right now. Because I'll tell you what, when I look at that, when I look at the Bears, I think they, I think the only thing that concerns me with Berkeley is when they play a team like Detroit Renaissance, I don't know if they're ready for that speed. Now, yes, they beat them two years ago, but that was a totally different regime. I don't know if they're ready for the pace that Detroit Renaissance would give them. And I think if you're Coach Shaver, you got to really, I think that this might be a good opportunity, you know what I mean, to really prepare your team for that frantic pace that, Detroit Renaissance is going to run. I, mean, I know Coach Sean Wood very well. I mean, and he run and they and that pace they run really frantic pace. I mean, they're going to pressure you. They're going to be in your face. They're going to be, you know, they're going to really, you know, try to speed you up. And I think that's something that if I'm Coach Clay Shaver, um, I would start maybe mentally preparing your girls for that. And I think that's something to really look at is. You know, because especially when you're in, a, in that district with Detroit Renaissance, that's an area where I think that's where um they got to start preparing for, honestly. And that's just my take. You know, I'm not I'm not sure what he's thinking, but that's just my take on it. Um, and then there's Troy. I mean, I think Troy's a team that's getting better because obviously when you look at Troy, you look at of course the the play of Diamond Prince. You look at, of course, um, you know, you look at um, a um, Reagan Zyder, um, you know, and they've been, they've been stalwarts for that team all year long. But the play of Olivia Strangler has really, Olivia Strangler, I mean, like, she, her play's been really good for this team. She was very instrumental in the game against Adams. Um, when I look at her game, she can shoot you at three. She can, you know, she can dribble drive. I mean, like, you know, you look at Diamond Prince, obviously, is the, um, you know, 
everybody's got to pay attention to that in Prince. Everybody's got to pay attention to Reagan Snyder. Olivia Sprangler's fit real nicely into that into that um, third spot, third option, which says a lot, you know, for Coach Laura Guzman, you know, considering that, you know, Carly Higginbottom's been hurt. Um, you know, Kelsey Block's doing everything she can in the interior. They don't really have a lot of interior play. I mean, not being mean to Ali Mantuza and company, but when I look at Troy, um, everything flo- starts and flows through the, through their big three, which is, you know, which is um Diamond Prince, Reagan Sider, and um, now you can put an Olivia Sprangler in that discussion. So, and I think with Troy, you know, those early losses, you know, trying to adjust to a new system, um, it's going to take some time. And it took some time for them. You know, they took their, they took their lumps. And, you know, they're starting to turn things around a little bit. I mean, they're starting to find themselves an identity a little bit, which is a good sign for them. Because if they do, look out. And I think Troy could be a team that could be very scary in this division, in the blue. Um, you know, obviously, you look at South and Arson Tech, you look at Berkeley, you look at Troy Athens and Troy in that conversation. Adams right now, I would say maybe, you know, they still have a chance, but they've got to figure something out and quick. They've really got to figure something out and quick. Um, and then there's Farmington. So when I look at this division right now, I would have to say, um, I would have to say right now, a and still the favorite in this division, followed by um, Berkeley, then Troy, Athens, then Troy, um, then Adams, then Farmington. So that's my take in that division right now. Um, and then let's go to the white. Um, obviously, when you look at this division here, um, Bloompy Hills starting to get their um, – Starting to get back in the thick of it, which has been good for them. Um, the play of Ruby Smith, obviously. Um, Brianna Young, um, you know, they had a big win the other night. Um, you know, when I look at Pumpia Hills, it's going to come down to guard play for them because, you know, you look at they got a lot of size in the interior. They got Ruby in there. Um, they got they got others in there. But it comes down to, is, can Ashley Fortner make shots? That's the question I have with Bloopy Hills and Coach Chris and Massey's team. Is, can they make shots? If they make shots, you know, that definitely opens the door up for Ruby Smith um, and Brianna Young. Um, they just got to make shots. And that's where I have with the Blackhawks is, can they, can this team make shots in critical situations? That's the question I have with them. Um, Royal Oak, can't really judge them this week because they didn't play this week. Um, obviously the, um, the, um, weather, de- the, um, the, the weather delay against them, Harper Woods, um, where they didn't play, um, because of the cold. Um, you know, Harper Woods, same thing. You can't really judge them, but, you know, with Royal Oak, I think they're going to be fine. I mean, they had a week of practice. Concerned about the rust, though, if you're Coach Brian Zapata. You just got to be very concerned about that. So, if you can basically make sure, you know, that you're prepared, you know, because you know in Michigan, and I talked about this earlier, with, you know, with the snow, with the with the storms, with the cold, um, you just got to be prepared, you know what I mean, if you're ready to play or not. I mean, like, and I think, you know, for Royal Oak, not for them not playing on that Friday because of the cold weather. Um, and that's where I get upset with the no school, no game policies is, you know, obviously, you know, and I mean, like they could have, they could have played that night down in Harper Woods. They could have played. I mean, but instead of, they had the no school, no game policy. Um, so and that's, that's the question I have going forward is, Honestly, you know, when you look at school districts, I mean, I really think they need to rethink their no school, no game policy. I really do. Some of these districts need to. That's just my take on it. But Royal Oak, they didn't play this week. Harper Woods, they didn't play this week. So, we'll see. 
I mean, we'll see what happens with them. They got to make up. They got. I mean, Harper Woods, I think, has got to make up two games in league. And Royal Oak, I think, has got to make up at least one. So we'll find out when they get their games for schedule. So we'll see. Um, Groves. Um, when I look at Groves, um, they're an interesting team. I mean, Groves is a really interesting team. It's hard for me to point where this team's at. It really is. I mean, I mean, they look good at one point, then they, and then the next moment they go like, "What are you doing?" So, Groves is like the great mystery. You know, it's like, it's like a mystery. You know, and that's how I look at what grows right now is they're a young team, yes. But, you know, I think they're more than capable of, you know, of you know, but I think I, I think they can be I think they'll be all right. But we'll see. We'll see with them. Um North Farmington. Oh boy. They didn't look good against Seahome. I think they've lost three of their last five. That's not good for Coach Michael Long. I think teams are starting to figure out Anaya Billups really well. I think teams are starting to figure out. Um, I think, you know, when you look at North Farmington, it comes down to is who's that third option. That's really where the problem for Coach Michael Long is, is who is that third option? Because everybody knows about Billups. Obviously, everybody knows about Asid Jihad. Everybody knows about those two. But who's that third option? Is it is it she is it see his little sister Quint? I mean, like I can't remember the name right now on the tip of my head right now. Or is it Hannah Hart? That's the question that I have right now with Nord Farmington. Is who's that third score gonna be for them? Um, can this team bounce back? I mean, you know, you I mean, like obviously. They've already got three losses right now. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on is North Farmington. How do they respond? That's the big question for them going forward. And then there's Seahome. I mean, Seahome's a team that, you know, when you look at the way that that team plays, Addie Flynn's been playing really well for Coach Chris Manchester. Um, they look good against North Farmington. Um, their experience was a factor in that game. Um, so when you really look at Seahome, you know, it, it depends, you know, what's your take about them. Is with Seahome, it comes down to is Ken, is how does the Seahome team do against teams in the red compared to everybody else? I mean, they do very well against everybody else, but when they play against red teams, they tend to struggle. So when I look at Seahome, um, they're an interesting team. Do I think they're the favorite right now in the in the white right now? I wouldn't I wouldn't think so. Because and I'm not, and I'm being honest here. I think Royal Oak and um I think Royal Oak and um Bloomfield Hills are gonna have really strong says about this in this division. But I think Seahome's a player. I really think they are. And maybe even Groves. I think Groves might be a player as well. So you know, so when you really look at it here, I just think that Groves, you know, I really think that Seahome, right now, I would put them in third best team in the division behind Bloopy Hills and Royal Oak. So my take on the division right now is I think Bloopy, I think Royal Oak, I think Royal Oak's one, I think Bloopy Hills is two, Seahome three, Groves four, um, North Farmington five, Harper Woods six. So. That's my take on the um, white division as of right now. And then let's go to the red. Um, and I'm going to start with Lake Orion because this team defensively the last two games has not been very good. And it's been clear. When you look at the stats, um, 74 and 60. That's about 68 a game in those two games. That's not good defense at all. The defensive transition for this team has been struggling. And I know Coach Bob Bridges' MO has always been defense. Defense always wins championships. Defense, you stop people. You, you stop people, at least offense. And 
I read what Coach Bridges said on, you know, to uh to my prep zone, and I agree with him. He's right. I mean, they're not. They haven't been sharing the ball. Um, they haven't been. Um, they haven't been. Um, you know, been themselves since that West Bloomfield game. I mean, they really haven't been themselves. That's got to change if you, you know, if this team wants to go far. I mean, if this team wants to, you know, to gain a dis- another district title. Now, albeit with Clarkston's case, you know, Clarkston, all they did was hell serve. I mean, Brooklyn Covert at 17, Eliana Roback 16, Eliana Morgan at 14. So when I look at Clarkson's case, they do foul way too much. And I think that's going to be a problem for Coach Aaron Goodna. People are going to say, well, Clarkson's defense was the difference um, in the game. It was, but especially in the first quarter when it was 22-6. to six. That was your ball game right there was that first quarter. Um, so when you, look at, when you look at it, Clarkson, you know, has not been a consistent team. They've not been consistent. And, you know, even Coach Aaron Goodnow even admitted it. You know what I mean? They haven't been as consistent defensively. So when I look at that game and say, are you going to make a change to your district projections? You know, with Clarkson's um, 12-point win, I mean, 12-point win against Lake Orion. To me, it's easy. No. Because when I look at that game in a neutral site, um, I would I would still trust, I trust Lake Orion in a neutral site. Because when you look at how Lake Orion's, I mean, Lake Orion last year, in a district, went to Clarkston and won that and won that district final against Clarkston. Now, albeit yes, they lost nine seniors. They lost nine seniors, nine very talented players. But when I look at, you know, they still got to go Lake Orion, which I think that's a difficult game for them. Um, and then you have that matchup most like, and then you're likely have another matchup at Water from Out. So, you know, it's just one. It's just one of three meetings this year. So if I'm Lake Orion, I'm fine. Um, just gotta shore up the defense. Um, you gotta find a way to shore up that defense because because if if you do, then I'll tell you what I think I think better results are gonna come if you shore up that defense. Um, Clarkson's case, I don't trust them when it comes to um, defense. Um, you got to wonder if when Eliana Ro- if Eliana Roback and Brooklyn Colbert when they play defense, I mean like, you know, are they are they the same player on both sides of the ball? Big questions there. So, we'll see. We'll see, but you know, I think the difference of that Lake Orion Clarkson game was the um was the first quarter um Clarkson um held Lake Orion to 6 points and took a 22-6 lead and Lake Orion just couldn't fight back from it. So, we'll see what happens. Um, Stony Creek, um, they're seven and zero right now. Um, they're rolling. They've they've been battle tested. Had to survive against Rochester with a low scoring thirty two thirty game. Um, when I look at Stony Creek, um, you know they've got some kinks in the armor a little bit, and that could be a concern for Coach Columbus Williams going forward. That could be a real concern. Um. Obviously, the big three is Sarah LaPrairie, Izzy Avage, and Americ Schlaubach. Um, you know what they're more than capable of. Rochester, I mean, in that game against Rochester, obviously, Alice Max had a nice game. So when I look at Rochester, so when I look at um, when I look at Stony Creek, um, I'll be very curious to see when they play West Bluebill. Because I think that's where they're going to have some problems. Um, I'll be curious to see when they play Lake Orion. Um... I think, you know, that'll be an interesting matchup. Um, so when I look at, you know, Stony Creek, their tests are coming. I mean, their big tests are coming. But right now, they've overcome it right now. They've overcome the test right now. I mean, they had that win against Clarkston. But I'll be very curious to see how they do against West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, um, those two teams in, in um, particular. Um, seeing how they match up. So we'll see what happens. I think I think the road for Stony Creek's gonna get tougher. Um, but we'll see what happens. 
Um, and then we have Oxford. Um, Oxford they had the tough loss to West Bloomfield. I think they're going to be fine. Um, you know, Allison Offsteller. Um, you know, um, they have um, they have um, Peyton Richter. Um, just a rough night against um West Bloomfield against West Bloomfield. Everybody's gonna have a rough night against them. Um, with the way that that team's been playing, I don't have to say much about West Bloomfield because you know they're already rolling people right now. So I don't have to say much about them. Um, Oxford. You know, when I look at them, um, I think they're gonna be okay. I think they're gonna be fine. I think it's gonna be a huge test to see. You know, I think they should use that game as a measuring stick how they match up against Grand Blank because, you know, when you look at that matchup and you know those two teams are going to play is, you know, for West Bloomfield is preparing you to play against that speed, you know, and Grand Blank plays that speed, especially Raven McQueen. You got to look at obviously the AU program, Michigan Storm. So, you know, when you look at teams that play with that frantic pace and that frantic speed, you know, so that's really where, you know, I would I would look at with West Bloomfield. Uh, I mean, like you know, if you're Oxford, and use that use your experience from playing West Bloomfield and use it against Grand Blank. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, Rochester, you know, when I look at them, obviously Alice Max, curious to see if Kylie Robinson comes back. Um, it'll be really interesting to see if she comes back. Um, she might be back this week. I mean, like, so we'll see what happens. For Coach Bill Thurston, but um, you know, I'm curious to see that guard situation is still a concern there for Rochester and Coach Bill Thurston. So we'll see what happens going forward there. So my take in the red right now, I would say West Bloomfield still the top team. Stony Creek, I have them at two. Clarkston, I have them three barely over Lake Orion. Um, but I think Lake Orion and Clarkston are, you know, almost like are like right there, neck and neck with each other. Um, and then I have Oxford, um, right now in that, um, so that's my take in the, and then, the, and then Rochester. I mean, like, so that's my take right now on the red is, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens in that division. So All right, let's go to the girl. Let's go to the boys now. Um, when I look at the blue division, Avondale's win against Oxford's huge. Um, Clayton, Clayton's really been the one that stand out for, um, is really stand out for Avondale. Um, he had a nice game against Oxford. Um, and then, and then you have, um, they got others as well. I mean, Justin Greer Sykes is a really solid player for coach, um, for, um, you know, for Avondale right now for coach Jared Thomas, um, the way that that team's been, um, you know, I think Avondale right now. Them and Berkeley are pretty much the two teams that are playing the best basketball right now in that division. Um, Oxford, you know that they still have the um, you, you, you still have that Robin issue a little bit with Jake Champagne playing the role of Batman. Um, they still have that issue a little bit. Stoney's won two straight, which is which is good for them. Um, knocked off Rochester on a Saturday matinee. Um, had a win against Ferndale U by one point. So when I look at Stony Creek. They've won two straight, but I'm still worried about this team because I can only imagine they lost that game to Ferndale U. I could only imagine they lost that game. Um, and they still got to go down there, which is going to be really interesting. You know, obviously, you know, Ferndale U, we know their court is very small. Um, and then, you know, Ferndale U is coming off a tough loss. Um, the Stony by one point. I think Coach Josh Nix has found something there with that team. Um, so I think they're going to be fine. Um, Stony Creek, I think, is going to be okay. I, I mean, like if they can start to start um getting a streak together, win streak together. I'll tell you what, I think they're going to be scary. Um, so when I look at Stony Creek, um, they're going to be fine. Um. Rochester, Max Mo had a nice game for Rochester in their loss to Stony. Um and they also their loss to Royal Oak. Um so when I look at Rochester, um, I think they're gonna be fine. They just haven't been able to put everything together. Um, I know it's been frustrating over there for Rochester and Coach um 
Nicobola. Um, but I think they're going to be okay. I really do. So we'll see what happens going forward, Rochester. But I think they're going to be okay. Um, so we'll see what happens to them going forward. Um, Pontiac, you know, they've been up and down. Um, I think they're going to be okay. Um, I think Pontiac, the way that that team's been, um, Coach Andrew Myers has done a nice job with a young group. Um, JJ Claudio's been playing really well for them. So, I think they'll be all right. Um, then there's Royal Oak. I mean, Royal Oak's been up and down. Um, they had a big win against Rochester. So, if you're Coach Aaron Smith, you know what I mean? It's kind of, it's, it's a good way, it's a good win for them to get back in the thick of it. So, We'll see what happens with them, but I think with Rock, but I think with um with Royal Oak, it just comes down to is are they consistent? They gotta they gotta start developing consistency, you know, to make the next step. And you know they've been up and down, and I think they gotta find a way to like be consistent in a tough situation. And then there's Berkeley. Berkeley's rolling right now. I think when you look at the teams that I don't think anybody wants to see right now. It's Coach Joe Sermo's team. He's got, that team's on a mission to try to win a division championship. You know, when you look at Berkeley, they haven't won a division title in a long while. And they got an opportunity to do that this year. They got a golden opportunity waiting them to win a division crown. I mean, they've been close on so many occasions. I mean, you know, they've been close on so many occasions, but they have not gotten the job done. Could this be the year that Coach Joe Sermo wins a division title? It could be. It could be. I mean, they have that win against that. I mean, they have that win against Oxford, which is huge. I think they have a win against Avondale. Um, but I'll tell you what. I think right now, when I look at that division, it's a three-team race between between Avondale, um, Berkeley, and Oxford. Now, why I put Oxford in here? With yeah, they got two losses, but Berkeley and Avondale have to go to Oxford. So, you know, they're right there in the, in the thick of it. But Oxford just can't afford to lose one more game. Because if they lose one more game, they're out of the league race. So, we'll see what happens there. I mean, we'll see what happens there. So, that's my take on um on the blue. When I look at the blue right now in the standings-wise, I think I would say Avondale. I would say Berkeley's the best team in that division right now. Then it's Avondale. Then Oxford. Um... Then I would say Pontiac, um, Rochester, Stony Creek, sorry, Pontiac, Royal Oak, um, St Stony Creek, Rochester, and then Ferndale U right now. And that's that's my take right now on the blue right now is with the way that those those teams line up right now with the way things are. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's go to the white. I mean, when you look at this division here, um, Lake Orion had a really tough loss to Harper Woods. Um, Harper Woods has been, like, very inconsistent. I mean, they had a that big win against Lake Orion, and then they go on the road against Detroit Western and end up losing that one by 10. So Harper Woods really, to me, has been really inconsistent. Um, really curious to see. They're a much different team at, at home than they are on the road. Um, they really struggle on the road. So when I look at Harper Woods, I mean, like, you know, they're going to have to win some games on the road. Um, you know, to be a player in this division. Um, Bloomfield Hills has been really struggling this year. Um, they did get a good win against Southfield Arson Tech. Um, Southfield Arson Tech is pretty much the, um, is the, um, so we'll see what happens there with A&T. And I think with A&T, um, they're going to be fine. Um, I think with A&T, I mean, like, They've struggled a little bit. So we'll see what happens with them. I think they're going to be, they're a team that's interesting to watch. Um, I think they're going to be okay. So, Boopy Hills, I think they're going to be fine. a and has been struggling this year. But with a and well, with Boopy, well, with um, a and t a and has been struggling. Boopy Hills, I think they're going to be fine with their young nucleus. Um, so we'll see what happens with that team going forward. I mean, we'll see what happens there. Um, when I look at A and T, uh, when I look at both A and T and Blue Bay Hills, um, Harper Woods we already talked about. Um, the consistency's been an issue for them, so 
We'll see what happens with them. Um, and then Lake Orion, I think Lake Orion's fine. I mean, they, they, I mean, they've had, I mean, like, they've been battle tested. Um, they've got to get Zach Parks going. I mean, like, that's been the key. Zach Parks has been one of the key players for Coach Jose Andrade's team. If they get him going, look out. Um, and then also Ryan Washo, when he's, when he's able to play, you know, not be in foul trouble, I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be fine. Um, so we'll see what happens with them, um, with, with, um, with Lake or, I mean, with Lake Orion, I think they're going to be fine. Um, Farmington's been playing really good basketball as of late, which is good. Um, I think the Falcons are a team that could really, really do some damage. Um, so we'll see what happens with them. I mean, Greg Grace at 34 and their loss to Troy Athens. So Farmington to me, you know, I think Farmington's a team that, um, they're going to be fine. Um, so we'll see what happens there with them. So, you know, so we'll see what happens. Um, and then there is, um, and then there is, um, you know, Troy, we know what they've been doing. They've been more than capable. They're playing really well right now. Um, I think the Colts are a scary team with the way that team is. Um, obviously, big three. Andrew Lake's really been playing really well for them. Um, I think Troy right now, to me, it's a team team to beat in that division right now. So we'll see what happens with them. Um, interesting schedule coming up for the Colts. Um, had a big win against Clarkston this week. Um, and then there's Seaholm. I mean, Seaholm's a team that really... See home's gonna be interesting to see how um they do. I mean they they were they hung tough with Troy. Um but we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens going forward with them. Um I think with them it's gonna be interesting to see how Troy does. And you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens with Sea Home going forward there. So when I look at the division right now, um Troy's still the best team in that division. I would say Troy Athens right now is number two. I think Lake Orion's still three. Um, Farmington, four. Um, Harper Woods, five. Um, I think A&T is seven. Um, Bloopy Hills is, um, Bloopy Hills is six. And then, um, Seaholm is five. So, you know, so that's really my take on the division right now in the white is, you know, obviously Troy really is the one that stands out. But second, third, and fourth, I think could be really interesting to see how that one goes between Troy Athens, um, Lake Orion, and, and Lake Orion. I think those are the two teams to really, really watch for. And they play each other on Friday night, so that's going to be another really interesting test going forward there in that one. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens there. Um, in that one. Um, and then there is the, um, and then there is the red. So when I look at the red, um, um, I think it'll be interesting to see how, um, that one goes. Um, I think that, um, you know, I gotta talk Clarkston. I mean, like, Clarkston's been, it's hard to see this team at six and six. Yes, the Reds a tough animal. It's a tough division. But it's unusual to see this type of program, you know, struggle like this. It's unusual. It's unclarkson like you know, for them to struggle. They had a tough buzzer-beating loss to Ferndale. Trenton Roos is a really good player. Shot a winning, um, winning jumper to beat Clarkston. They played much better in that game against Ferndale than they did against Troy. Um, and then there is, and then there is, um, you know, and then, and then of course you look at the, look at West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield's red hot right now, the way that they're playing. So when I look at West Bloomfield, they're saying, oh boy, we'll see what happens. I mean, they're rolling right now. Got a lot of confidence. If you're coaching that Jordan, you got a lot of confidence right now. Um, and then there is, um, and then there is, well, and then of course there is, um, you know, Groves. Groves has been struggling until they knocked off Notre Dame Prep. For Groves, it's, it's simple Groves because they struggle in the red. 
They are really struggling in the division. When they go out of division, this team's solid. I mean, this team is solid when they're not in the division. I mean, like, when they're not in the division. Because, and I'm looking at the stats, and, you know, the only non-league loss in there was Canton. So, that's my take on that. And I think that's interesting to see how they go going forward. So, I think, honestly, you know, when I look at for, when I look at um, Groves, I think Coach Mark West's team, is they're going to be solid. But I think playing in the red is much of a challenge right now for them. Yes, they got Josh Gibson and John um, Gibson. Josh Gibson and John Simpson. So, I think with Groves, they're going to be fine. Oak Park, I can't judge them. They didn't play in a week. So, we'll see what happens with them. Um, I really can't judge them right now. Um, Adams, um, they had that low-scoring game against North Farmington. Um, Dylan Smith actually was the difference in that game for um, North Farmington. Um, North Farmington has different players step up. But for Adams, in their case... They've got it. The three ball's got to be working for them. I mean, William G., Peter Kardashian, Trenton Lagarde, they've got to be shooting a high percentage for them to be successful. And, you know, the last two games, they've, they've, had some, they've had some struggles. And that's something that's got to be addressed for Coach Isaiah Novak. you got to address that. I mean, they are struggling shooting shooting the ball from three. So that's something got to be addressed if you're um, Adams. is They're going through a rut right now. And I think they're going to be all right. I mean, but they're just going through it right now. Just going through the motions, going through that rut right now. And they got to get out of that rut. They do. They're going to be fine. Then there's Ferndale. Um, Ferndale, um, I think the Eagles, when I look at them, um, I think the Eagles are a team that I think is going to be fine. Um, I think they've gotten to a nice winning streak again. Um, Coach Juan Rickman's starting to figure some things out a little bit. It's kind of similar to when they won the state title last year with them. So when I look at the Eagles, you know, I think with them, it's going to come down to is can Ferndale, you know, replicate that magic that they had last year when they won the D2 state title and simulate it to this year. Now it's a much taller task when you look at the district now. Obviously, with Lauren, with Warren Lincoln in there, they're ranked in the state right now. You have Detroit Pershing's a dark horse in there, and they have home court. So, it's going to be a challenge for Coach Rickman and the Eagles to really look and say, um, you know, you know, saying that this district is a cakewalk, because it's not. <laughs> but they had, to survive their own, they had to survive their own district last year, where Warren Lincoln was in that district. Um, they had to survive that. So we'll see what happens with Ferndale. But there's still some questions when you look at the Eagles. It, it, when you look at the Eagles, is can they take the next step? I mean, like, you know, and it looks like they're starting to show some signs. But we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens going forward there with them. So, you know, so that's my take on, um, on um, Ferndale. As I mentioned, North Farmington. Finding ways to win. I mean, played Adams, won that one. Then they went to Glen Oak, Ohio. I mean, like they went to Ohio and played them. Um, Glen Oak, Ohio, had to survive that one, sixty-two to fifty-four. I mean, it's interesting when you when you, we have teams go out of state. And North Farmers is a team that went out of state um, and played a game over in Ohio just to see where they're at. Um, obviously Ohio, they got some good basketball down there and in that state. Um, so they wanted to test themselves. And I know Coach Todd Negotian wants to test themselves. So they went down there and it was a tough game for them. It was a really tough game, but they found a way <laughs> and their famous two, two, one full court trap defense and won that game against a really good Glen Oak team by eight points. So. When you look at North Farmington, seeing they're, they're sitting at 11 and 0, really nice um, record right now. The way that they're playing, um, having to play on a Sunday, which is not easy to do, 
Um, considering, obviously, you know, you having to deal with the traffic, um, going back into Michigan, um, and then having a school day the next day. Um, so really, when I look at the case there, um, just a lot of adversity that this North Farmington team went through. And I think it's going to help them going forward when you look at the postseason. Um, when you look at that district, it looks very favorable for North Farmington. Even though that district's at Lavoni Stevenson, um, I think it can knock off Lavoni Franklin. I mean, Lavoni Franklin's a solid team. Lavoni Stevenson, we know they're a tough out for anybody. Farmington's a team that I think is scare, starting to scare people this year. Um, they're getting, they're scaring people right now the way that they've been playing. I mean, they've been red hot ever since the um, calendar turned to, to January. They've been playing really good basketball. So for North Farmington, challenges are there come the postseason. I think going into whole Ohio and playing in that turn, playing in a classic there. I know they got a couple classics coming up. They got to go to the west side of the state. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how North Farmington matches up you know, when they got to play teams from the west side of the state. So, we'll see what happens there going forward there with North Farmington. So, when I look at the red right now, I would have to say um, North Farmington is my top team. I would say West Bloomfield is my number two. I like the way that Coach on that Jordan team is playing right now. Um, I mean, like, um, Drew Wilson's fit in really nicely with that team to go along with them. Michael Pittman, Donnie Watt. I'm, I mean, like, you really look at the Lakers. They've got their guard situation's been really good. Interior is a little bit of a concern for me when I look at the Lakers. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens with them there. So I think West, but I think West Bloopy right now, they're still my number two team right now. Ferndale, I have number three. Um, Ethan Vineyard's really starting to break out, which is a good sign for Ferndale. Trenton Roos starting to come back in the thick of it. They had they had a um they had to overcome Clarkston on the road and of course they had that buzzer beater. Um so it was a good win for the um Eagles to go into Clarkston and win in that environment. That's not an easy thing to do, especially for for Ferndale having to travel all the way up north um to I seventy five to um you know to um f to um Fleming's Lake to Satchmo Road to Fleming's Lake Road. Um Really tall order there for um, Ferdinand to win that one. Um, Adams is my number four team. I think with the Highlanders, um, they've got to get their shooting funk out of their heads. If they can get their shooting struggles away, I think they're going to be okay. Um, so that's my take on the e that's my take on the um, Highlanders. They they've got the pieces. They can fix some things. Um, so. We'll see what happens with Ferndale. I mean, like with um with them Adams. So that's something to really watch for with them. Um, Clark, I would say Oak Park's my fifth ranked team right now, the way that team's been right now. So I think the um I think the Knights, you know, I mean they got players. Geo Hodges obviously stands out. Um, and then I have Clarkston at my number six ranked team. I think Clarkston coming up. I mean, it's unusual for me to see this Wolves team sitting at six and six. Um, just with the way that team is, I think they're better than, than thought, but you know, they've been struggling, which is really unusual for them. And it's been a very odd situation for them, you know, to see it themselves at six and six and then Groves. I mean, obviously Groves, as I mentioned earlier, when they're in league play, they struggle. Um, when they're out of league, they usually, they're solid. I mean, they have wins against Notre Dame prep. Um, that's their big, that's, I think that's their best one of the year is Notre Dame prep. So we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, we're in the middle of basketball season in the heart of it right now. Not neglect, not neglecting others as well. I mean, cheerleading's in the heart of their season right now. Hockey's in the heart of their season right now. Um, you know, so a lot to really look forward to, uh, and also wrestling's in the heart of their season right now. So a lot to look forward to in the month of winter. Just hopefully, you know, we can get these games in, obviously, with the um, with the weather coming ahead of us. So we'll see what happens going forward. Make sure you all follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. We're keeping an eye on the football situation over at Stony Creek and um, at Southfield Arts and Tech. I've been hearing a lot of rumblings over at Stony Creek about who their new head coach might be. Um, but I'm not going to confirm it until I... Um, you know, until I see the proof. So we'll see what happens going forward there 
heading forward there.